Creativity is like some strange, non-Newtonian fluid. Something we can grasp for one second, but that can just as easily slip between our fingers the next. The world we live in today is surrounded by technologies that change our lives in radical ways, both good and bad. But it's not just everyday lives that have been changed, but also the way musicians and artists create their works. Modern audio technologies like the Digital Audio Workstation gives any musician with a computer containing more processing power than a baked potato to pretty much modify and manipulate audio in ways that would have been completely impossible with previous older analogue technology. Not to mention, digital sound gives access to pretty much an infinite selection of digital instruments and effects to choose from. While modern technologies do offer endless artistic possibilities, you could argue this inherently harms creativity, not facilitate it, as creativity thrives in limitation, not infinite possibility. Take the Beatles for example. Their 1966 album called Revolver was pretty much entirely recorded on multiple Studer J37 tape machines which only supported four track recording. The Beatles and studio producer George Martin overcame this challenge by recording on one machine before transferring to a master machine via reduction mixing, a form of overdubbing. This gave leeway for do-overs and mistakes. A limitation of this is that every time you transferred to the master machine, the quality starts to degrade due to the nature of the magnetic tape. But it was exactly this limitation that made every single artistic possibility have to be carefully thought through beforehand, pushing the limits of the technology. The result was an album containing completely unique timbres and sounds. According to Paul McCartney himself, there are sounds on Revolver that nobody else has done yet. I mean nobody. Ever. Some artists have even self-enforced limitations on themselves to empower creativity. Take, for example, the legendary Austrian composer Arnold Schoenberg, who pioneered the 12-tone technique. Put simply, the composer selects a specific order of all 12 tone notes in the chromatic scale, known as a tone row, and rearranges, transposes and inverts it in various ways while keeping the specific order of tones, ensuring that every note is played before moving on to a new row. He did this to free himself from traditional tonal music and harmony. However, rather paradoxically, the 12-tone technique contains much stricter rules in comparison to traditional tonal music, which doesn't have any specific guidelines to compose in a specific way. He used the limitation, not the freedom, imposed by the 12-tone technique to create completely innovative and original works becoming one of the most influential yet controversial composers of the 20th century. Another great example is the American contemporary artist Phil Hansen. His works include a rendition of the Mona Lisa entirely using burger grease and a artwork using banana tattoo. What limited Phil Hansen though was not a technological limitation but a personal one. He cannot draw a single straight line due to a neurological condition leaving him with a permanent tremor in his hand. Yet despite this limitation, or maybe even because of it, he creates completely unique and innovative works by embracing that shake. In fact, when he finally invested in new tools to give himself more artistic possibilities, and to replace his old horrible set, he found that he actually became less creative due to, in his words, I realised I became paralysed by all of the choices. If, like me, you find yourself scrolling down a endless list of options, instruments, effects, time signatures and tempos, try limiting yourself instead. 
if you want to be more creative or have a creative block, giving yourself unlimited artistic possibilities might be the complete opposite of what you should do. As a musician, you could try to limit yourself to a single key, a single instrument or even a single note. If you are an artist, try painting with burger grease instead of Photoshop. If you are a YouTuber, try making a video about a limiting subject, like the surprising science behind bubble wrap, or the musical impact of chairs. Points being, it may be wise to think inside the box, not outside it. In the words of Phil Hansen, we need to become limited to become limitless. Thanks for watching.